Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to our March uh, 2021 GPTA Georgia chapter meeting. Um, today, we're excited to have Jan Lennon. She's the Assistant General Manager of Safety and Security at Atlanta Heart Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. And today, she's going to provide us with an update on uh, what's going on at the airport, along with some new initiatives uh, that the, the airport has taken on. Uh, I want to thank today's meeting sponsor, Grasp Technologies. Um, who Eric Mueller, uh, GRASP founder and CEO, will join us momentarily to give us a brief presentation followed by a short video. And we should all hear sound this time. So we got the technical issues from the previous call taken care of, so we should all be good. But if you don't hear sound, somebody please raise your hand and let me know. Um, as for chapter updates, there's not a whole lot to add in addition to the, the mini novel I sent out a couple of weeks ago to the members. Um, but I will mention that we sent out a survey earlier this week. Um, that survey is going to help us greatly in, in, in how we plan out the rest of the year, our chapter meetings, and also give us a feel for, for what we're doing um, or what you're all doing uh, with GBTA, um, which is uh, good information for us to have uh, as we, as we um, start our planning for the convention. Um, as far as housekeeping, um, please keep your mics muted, um, of course. Uh, and if you have questions for our Q&A session, please use the chat feature. Um, we'll likely open it up at the end if you want to you know, ask questions directly, but the preference would be to use the chat feature and Kim Kearns will be managing the Q&A at the end of Jan's presentation. Um, we're going to start off with some um, updates from the, from, the, from the board. You'll get a membership update, an auction update, and a sponsorship update. And then we'll move on into the sponsorship presentation and speaker presentation. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Melody Hayslip, who is our membership director, and she's going to give us a, uh, a couple of minutes. So. Thank you, Dwight. And um, thank you so much, everybody, for um, the time. I'm happy to be here to update a little bit about what we're doing on the membership committee. So our focus right now is a spring and summer membership drive. We, you know, with everything going on right now and people's lim time and limited resources are pressing, we want to make sure that in this membership drive that we do the right presentation to the right people at the right time. So we're looking, we put together an email, which is an elevator speech sort of template that we're planning to start to send out. And this basically focuses on the benefits, value, and return on investment for the Georgia GBTA membership. Some highlights of that are really to focus on the opportunity to expand your network by collaborating with industry professionals, increasing your knowledge through top-notch educational programming, which is like what we're having today, um, the availability of professional development scholarships, participation in community service projects that actually really do assist our local community, and then the access to the full membership directory of suppliers and buyers, as well as our newest feature, our current job postings for our industry. Then we want to make sure that we're outreaching to the right people. We want to encourage our current members to renew their memberships and then focus on new buyers and new suppliers. And we're all dying and ready to get back out there to interact and network with people. But with employment changes in our industry, we know that there have been changes to buyers and suppliers. Um, so what's our strategy? Who, who, who do we invite? It, it looks like a lot of times it might be the, um, the CEO might be the person that you would want to invite. And that's great. But a lot of times you don't hear back from that person. And it may be because it's not in her area of focus, not that she's not interested. So we need to research our outreach, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And now are there admins out there who are handling travel that we don't know about? Let's invite them and invite them to come as our guest and see what we're all about. We want to also research supplier changes and make sure that if we have suppliers that have been on furlough, that we get them back and get them re-engaged. And also, you know, look outside the metro Atlanta area, area and other areas of Georgia for potential members. 
And also, I was thinking that it might be great to reach out to certain members in cities that are an hour flight out in and out of Atlanta. Those people may come to Atlanta often and have stakeholders in our market and be very interested in the business acumen of our market. And then finally, what can we do as members? Well, referrals are fantastic. So if you know of potential members, please invite them. And if you're interested in receiving the email template, we'll be happy to send it to you. Or if you want us to invite someone on behalf of the board, we're happy to do that as well. And then a very simple thing that you can do is to make sure you list your Georgia GBTA membership on your LinkedIn profile. And when you do that, use keywords so that our chapter appears in searches that you appear in. Post, post about our speaker today and about what you've learned because your personal testimony, honestly, is the best advertising that we can get. So I appreciate this time and I look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions. And I am going to hand it off to Will so he can talk to you about the auction update. Thank you so much, Melody. Um, uh, excited to see what you're gonna do with memberships here and uh, all the great initiatives you've got going on. I um, just wanna say quickly that uh, it's great to see so many familiar faces and um, also look forward to meeting those of you I haven't had the chance to connect with yet. Um, so as you all, a lot of you probably know this, the annual auction uh, for GBTA is really a key event, which is really just a, a part of a lifeblood for our local organization. It's really a big deal. Um, and we feel that with the collective support of our members, guests, and those within your network, we can really have an incredible impact and we can have a fun and successful auction this year. So continuing from last month's message, we'd like to ask you guys for your help uh, and present a friendly challenge, right? So, and that is, can you look within your home and within your personal and professional network and challenge yourself to secure one item to donate each month. Um, that's really what the goal is. Uh, imagine the impact if we can all do just that. I mean, we can have a huge impact this year. Um, I'd like to applaud uh, three of our board members, Melody, Donna, and Debbie, leading from the front for all securing auction items last month. So thank you guys. If we were in person, we'd be giving a clap. Um, so in terms of time and place, right now it is set for December of this year. That's not going to change. Uh, right now, it's obviously things are a little fluid, so we should know by summer if that's going to be in person or if that's going to be virtual, but we'll absolutely keep you posted. Uh, lastly, after the meeting, you know, we're, we're going to send out the auction contribution letter to you, and I encourage you guys all to take the challenge that we just mentioned and to give that letter out really like candy to your network, <laughs> right? Uh, use that as a tool. Um, my contact information is on that letter, and I'll look forward to answering any questions that you or anyone in your network might have. And I just want to thank you guys in advance for your support with that. And with that, I will hand it over to our director of sponsorships, Rick George. Hey, Will, thank you. Um, and thanks to all of you. Great to see uh, a great turnout for uh, March and, and uh, some faces we haven't seen in, in a few months. So um, really, we, we thank you so much for attending. And from a sponsorship standpoint, we thank you so much for our sponsors this year. We know it's, it's uh, without saying, been, uh, been a tough year. Um, I think this March meeting was our last in-person meeting uh, in, through 2020 and, uh, and, and uh, hard to believe. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely hard to believe. But uh, we've had some great companies step up. Uh, for 2020 and 2021 sponsors. And uh, we still have a few openings um, for uh, the remainder of the year. So if you're interested, um, please give me a call. Uh, please email me. We will work something out and you have a great opportunity to either sponsor a virtual meeting uh, like we are today or hopefully a uh, return to in-person meetings relatively soon. Um, I will say that our uh, sponsor next month is CTM, and we're super excited uh, with Susan Thomas and, uh, and her group being um, our meeting sponsor for April. And I'd like to thank uh, our meeting sponsor for this month, for March, which is my company, uh, and thank Eric and, uh, and our team for uh, giving us the opportunity. Um, and with that, I would like to introduce um, Eric Mueller, uh, some of you may remember a few years ago, Eric did a great uh, presentation at uh, I think 103 West, if, if I remember, on, uh, on, on data and in the future of data. We're so happy to have Eric back and um, talk a little bit about GRASP. We have a short video after and um, we'll, uh, we'll share that with you in a minute. But uh, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome Eric Mueller, our founder, our CEO, and uh, my friend. So Eric, 
please. Hey, thanks, Rick. I uh, appreciate that introduction. Uh, I don't ha really have much to say except that I appreciate the opportunity to support the mission of GBTA uh, and, you know, obviously the Georgia BTA chapter. So, and uh, now that I am in the Jacksonville area, I plan on spending a considerable amount of time with you guys up north. So hopefully I'll see everybody soon and I uh, hope it's going to be face to face soon. So glad to see everybody. Um, I'll give it back to you, Rick. Thanks, Eric. And um, so with that being said, our uh, wonderful marketing group put together just a, a real short video. It's about a minute and a half on, uh, on GRASP, um, on our uh, mission and uh, how we're uh, hopefully helping all of you fight uh, COVID and, and coming out of uh, COVID as business starts to return. So Dwight, if you'd be kind enough to play it, we'd, we'd appreciate it. And we thank you all for uh, giving us the opportunity to be sponsor. My thanks to Eric uh, for joining and uh, Dwight, I will hand it back to you. Thanks so much, everybody. It gives me a distinct pleasure to introduce our speaker of the day. And um, that's Jan Lennon from the Atlanta airport, Hartsville Jackson. If you were with us last year, Jan's no stranger. She actually um, did an in-person, if you believe it, you know, we had used to have meetings face to face. and. Jan was one of our last speakers that we had face-to-face -face. Um, and she's back with us, command performance. We had a lot of good feedback from the membership last year. So quickly, let me give you um, or give Ann, or Jan some accolades. Um, she is the Assistant General Manager for Public Safety and Security of ATL. She leads public safety and the security team with operational responsibilities for airport law enforcement life and fire safety, emergency, preparedness and response, and the airport communications center. Um, she, in her day-to-day -day, uh, job, she's overseeing the operations and regulatory compliance to ensure the safe and secure movements of passengers and the aircraft operations every day. Um, she coordinates with federal, state, and local agencies, including the FAA, Transport Security Administration, Department of Homeland Security, and the FBI. Um, under her leadership, the airport has ex executed numerous security programs, including enhanced background investigations, perimeter protection, and a comprehensive employee screening checkpoint. Today, she's going to be with us to talk about resiliency and what's going on um, in in her arena. So without further ado, Jan, I'll turn it over to you. 
Well, thank you so very much for that, Kim. I greatly appreciate it. Like you said, uh, I can't remember. I, I mean, I can't um, even, you know, just think about it. Um, like last year, like last March, uh, we were in person and now everything has just turned upside down and we are all into this virtual world. Um, but guess what? We've all come through it. Um, we have all endured it. We are resilient. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I noticed one of the capture talking about, you know, airport travel is coming back. But guess what? Airport travel never left, right? <laughs> so anyway, I would like to just talk to you about some things that we're doing at the airport, what's happening pretty much at all airports now, and um, just trying to give you some information that you can share with your family, friends, and colleagues about um, travel. And um, of course, we're all waiting to get to some type of normalcy, but these are the things that we are doing in order to ensure that um, we're keeping um, the airport and the travel from A to B as safe as possible. So with that said, I have my public affairs manager with me, Anika Robertson. She is behind the scenes and she will be assisting me in driving um, the presentation for me. So next, we're going to have a quick one minute video as well. So I'm sorry you didn't hear the sound, but that was just an overview of some of the things that I'm going to talk about as how the airport has prepared itself for airport travel uh, post COVID. So let's talk about airport parking. So some of the things that we've done in airport parking, um, before uh, there was a federal mandate for masks, it was really left upon each individual city, um, airport to determine whether or not they were going to have um, mandated masks. So for our airport, prior to the um, federal mandate, um, the mayor, um, our mayor, uh, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms had mandated that the airport persons that are coming through the airport had to wear masks. So we were um, mandating mask wearing at the airport prior to the federal mandate that required all employees and provided all passengers that have to wear masks. Um, even our employees on our shuttle bus um, buses had to wear masks at that time. Um, we mandated social distancing. Um, our international shuttle bus operations um, also had to wear masks. Um, we also enforced the uh, six um, feet rule. Uh, we increased the deep cleaning of all of our contact touch points. Uh, we have spent um, uh, quite a bit of resources financially and in human labor to ensure that we constantly have persons cleaning our touch points areas at all times. And that includes our elevator buttons, countertops, you name it, we've done that. Um, and we've also increased the frequency. You know, normally before COVID, um, you would normally clean um, about twice a day, normally in the morning, and then you would clean in the evening. Now we're uh, just constantly cleaning throughout the day and they have a much more frequent schedule. And we've incorporated much touchless technology in our ATL West parking deck, which allows customers to access the facility and pay from their mobile services. So some there are some of the things we're doing there. And then in our operations um, area, um, excuse me, one second. You know how you have the sensor in your um, your sensor in your office, and I want to make sure you can see me. <laughs> excuse me. Yes, we're back on. Sorry about that. Um, when you stay still too long, um, we have um, safety measures in our operations where we are doing cleaning this other facilities. 
touchless hand sanitizers, dispensers throughout the airport. We have audio announcements talking about um, some of the sanitation things that we're doing, some of the cleaning that we're doing at the airport, um, things that we would like for our passengers and our employees to continue. We have signs and everything that is on the floor marking, and that's a picture of one of those as well. If a person comes to our airport, and um, they do not have a mask. We also have millions, millions, I mean, literally millions of masks that we are able to provide to our passengers, even our employees, if in fact they do not have masks. If you go to our checkpoints, <clears throat> you will see that also masks are required, but also we have uh, physical barriers. They are plastic plexiglass that we have. So therefore, when you're in a parallel, parallel position, you have a plexiglass. So that removes um, that distance and any type of germs airborne between you and someone else in that line. Um, and it also still allows for the passenger to still have visibility of the queuing space as well. Let's talk about things in our terminal. Um, we've implemented a multi-dimensional approach and that is to minimize risk by working closely with our janitorial staff, airlines, concessionaires. As you well know, the airport is, um, we have a, a myriad of partners. Um, we are not successful um, until we have all of our partners and stakeholders um, doing everything as one. And I always say that that is the success of Hartsfield Jackson is the fact that we have great relationships. We have great partnerships with our stakeholders. And we look at each other. It may be 1,200 companies out here, but we are a one. So we work together closely in that arena. And this approach as far as communications and processes and procedures, trying to make it seamless as one as possible has done Done wonders for us. And we remain focused um, on a balance of clean and disinfected um, in different areas. Um, we um, ensure that we address any of the concerns, continuous concerns of our employees and our passengers, any information that they want to provide us in order to enhance what it is that we're doing. Uh, we have partnered with various cleaning companies to enhance our processes for the high volume areas at the airport. And we continue to roll out touchless functions such as, um, you know, you can now purchase food in a touchless environment, um, enhance sanitation protocols and clean and we clean those items um, because like I said, we have a lot of portables there that we're using in a touchless environment and apparatus. So we having someone there to constantly clean that apparatus for us. Um, so again, when we're talking about all of our touchless areas, we're talking about curbside, our seating areas, elevators, escalators, tables, restaurants. Those are the things that we're constantly cleaning. Talk about the airlines. You may hear a lot about what the airline is doing um, through the media. But the airlines, most airlines offer flexible um, travel, no change fees in order to assist um, passengers. Um, face, ma face, face masks are, have to be worn. Um, and if you know, if you've seen some of the articles that someone doesn't wear and face masks, you can be removed um, from the aircraft. Um, and we just have a higher elevated um, standard of care. I must say our, our, <laughs> our airplanes is more clean than ever before. I mean, the focus on cleanliness is just outstanding. When you get on the plane, they're giving you wipes, they're giving you sanitation, and then your um, the plane is clean so well prior to you getting off. They block off the middle seats. We have fogging um, apparatus that help us clean prior to you getting on. They give you notification, letting you know that the plane has been clean. And um, in the last, um, we had an interesting um, um, scenario about um, us winning a customer service award as far as us getting information out to everyone about what we're doing and then also how our passengers have been responding to um, our initiatives and saying they are um, they great they really feel good so we are so excited about that our concessionaires <clears throat> Um, my concessionaires, um, as you well know, took a real big hit um, in this uh, COVID 
um, um, environment. Uh, we've had many, we have some stores that are still closed, don't know if the stores are able to open back up. We had some stores that had to have modified hours and then some are just, just coming back strong. So we're um, happy to know that. But of course, in our um, concessionaires, you know, the social distancing, the queuing, the dwelling areas, the floor markings, um, we have table um, decals in the food courts and on various tables in our um, restaurants. We have um, touchless order kiosks. That's what we were talking about. Touchless directories to get you to point A to point B. Um, and we have self-service food option. And we also have vending machines. And we also installed 400 hand sanitizers throughout the airport. So we have really, really been busy um, enhancing um, a touchless environment at ATL. Ground transportation. In ground transportation, again, must wear face coverings um, on our apparatus, temperature checks by all um, of our employees. We do temperature check all of our critical mission employees because critical mission, employ critical mission employees never left the airport. We still continue to work um, um, 24 hours um, a day, seven days a week. Um, we created social distancing with blocking of our seats in the terminals um, and even on our shuttles um, and required passengers to also wear face coverings as well. Um, individual companies across the different modes of transportation have mandated that drivers wear their face masks as, as well. And again, this was we were doing this prior to the federal mandate. So we were definitely ahead of the curve. And let's talk about our great, great employees. So again, um, our employees have been um, resilient. Um, they have been the backbone of this operation. They are the ones that are helping and um, implementing and overseeing that these things are done throughout the airport, making sure that we are following the federal regulations that are required for us to wear masks, um, making sure that our passengers and everyone are adhering to the CDC rules and guidelines. Um, they are ensuring that our contractors are adhering to the rules and the policies as well. So and that's in our public areas, that's in our secure area, the sterile area. So our employees are doing a great job with that and then also making sure we're keeping them safe is our number one priority. Vaccine. Yay, vaccine. I'm not sure about most of you, but I am so excited to announce that I did receive my first round of the vaccine and I will receive my second round on the 23rd of March. Uh, so Delta Airlines, um, we have a vaccine um, site and it is one that is over at the Delta Museum that is on our footprint and also on Concourse C um, of our airport. Um, we, Delta, had this site starting February the 22nd, and as of today, they have vaccined um, a little over 10,000 um, people, um, employees, should I say, employees, those that are badge holders, um, since that time frame. So we're really excited about that. They will be in this space through May. I can't remember the date, but it's sometime through May that we will be in this space, um, being able to vaccine the airport community, all that would love to have this vaccine. So as you can see, um, we are ready. We are ready. We have increased our facility cleaning, touchless payment options, public hand sanitizers, contactless ordering options, um, employee mask and glove, and enforcing that passengers wear a mask as well. We have social distancing petitions and protocols. Um, we enforce that everyone maintains the six feet social distancing rule. Um, we minimize the crowding and those that are going into the elevators and the trains. Um, again, face coverings is mandated. We encourage um, that we people wash their hands often and definitely keep their hands out of their face. So ATL has been leading um, this arena. We have other airports that are really doing great things as well, um, ensuring that they're keeping their passengers and their employees safe as possible. And then we also have to recognize that the individual person has a responsibility themselves. So therefore, um, 
we believe that with all of these initiatives that um, someone traveling through Atlanta or visit Atlanta, visiting Atlanta, they would definitely be as safe as they possibly can. Nothing is 100%, but we do want people to know that we have been working hard and ensuring that we can kind of keep a pretty decent, um, safe environment for people to travel through and minimize as much exposure um, as possible. So, with that said, um, I'm not sure if um, people have recognized our wonderful cannabis that we have at the airport. Our cannabis, we light um, different colors depending on an event. Um, so for example, then you see the all blue. The all blue is already programmed. Um, we have for two for two events. And one of the events is um, for Blue is the healthcare professionals. We definitely, when we have it Blue, want to recognize them because we just can't thank them enough of everything they have done through us through COVID. And also when we have it Blue, especially in January, is for Human Trafficking Day. So that's when we have our Blue. And then when you see the red, white, and blue, normally you will see it for Memorial Day and you will see it for the 4th of July. So um, just letting you know, we do a lot of work there to express um, our thanks and um, also to um, recognize um, different events and so forth um, here, um, you know, in, in our country, should I say. So thank you for that. Um, are there any questions that I can answer? Dan, um, we've, we've not received any questions yet on the, um, in the chat box. Okay. Although I, I did have one when you were talking about critical mission employees, mm -hmm. what, what do you, what, who are the critical mission employees? Okay, at our airport, the critical mission employees is pretty much everyone in my bureau. <clears throat> so fire, of course, fire, police, um, uh, security, operations, uh, ground transportation. Um, you will also have your maintenance. Um, uh, what else? Um, all of our operations that are 24 hours, our maintenance group, um, and um, our planning and develop construction crew, because construction still goes on, but normally they're at, at the night, so we consider them critical, essential. And um, so that's who you have here. Um, and then, of course, I'm sorry, our emergency management group. Um, they are 24 hours as well. So we have not left. We have to be here in order to keep the facility safe and secure. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, now, you know, when you were talking about the airplanes, them, the aircrafts themselves and the cleaning, um, you know, there's, there's a mention of blocking middle seats. Uh, do you know, is that the case with all airlines? We know Delta has done a great job and is continuing it through April. What about other airlines? Now, it, it, it varies through the airlines um, because of course now I can only speak for Delta and Delta definitely has the middle seats. And like you stated, they will continue that um, through May. I do, I do know some um, airlines, um, some never stopped and some had, and now they have resumed filling in the middle seats. So again, that's um, case by case through each airline. Okay, great. Um, now, uh, now some questions are coming in. Um, are, will you, are you able to share any specific new security protocols that have been put in place um, since the start of COVID? New security protocols. Um, we have not, uh, let me say, um, there with COVID, there has not been any um, federally, should I say, new security protocols in the normal sense, but we have had some um, administrative uh, changes that we had to have as a result. And of course, when the COVID, of course, people when um, places, um, stores and things of that nature closed, so if a person um, is not working at the airport, of course that badge that they had, we had to do some deactivation and recovering there. And then we had some specific um, procedures there that of course I cannot go into what those changes are. Um, all of our um, security initiatives, what we have been doing before still stayed in place. 
um, what I do like to remind people when they're talking about the airport, you know, most people focus a lot on the passenger. Um, High School Jackson um, had 110 million passengers uh, the prior year, right? Now, as you well know, we are nowhere near that number um, for 2020. However, that's the passenger in. When you're talking about public safety and security, the fact that the doors were open, the fact that if you had one employee, if you had one passenger, I still have to have the same enhanced security protocol regardless. Um, so that the fact that we were open, nothing changed there. We still had heightened security. Uh, uh, we still implemented all of our security protocols because nothing changed for us. Um, the volume of number of maybe employees coming through and definitely of passengers but we still operated the same because we still had access, um, people coming in the airport, people leaving the airport, people still traveling through the airport. Right, yeah, and that's good to know. So regardless of the number of passengers coming through, you still have to have that, that level of security and safety. And Absolutely, yes. Right. Are you able to share with us, you said in 2019, there were 110 million passengers through. Any, any, um, updates on what 2020 looked like as far as the numbers? Yes, those numbers have not been uh, relayed to us yet. Um, I think uh, Anika may know. Um, I'm, I'm thinking we will not know definitively until maybe about May um, mm -hmm. what the final numbers are. Gotcha, okay, thank you. But I know it's nowhere near 102 million. <laughs> I hope and pray at least maybe get 60, maybe, I don't know. It's about a 60% decrease. So we're okay. right at about 43 million, but that is a very unofficial number. So please do not share that. Uh, absolutely, thank you. So everyone note that, not official. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it, so another question that has come in, um, is there an alternative to using the train to get to a concourse? We, we know that you can walk it, but if they're in a rush or they don't have the physical ability to walk it, is there a different way other than using the train? Um, the only, like I said, you have the train or you can walk or you can request for um, wheelchair service and the wheelchair service and you can let them know that once you get to the um, train level, you do not want to be on the train. You would just would prefer them to, um, you know, just go through the walking route and push you through um, on that level to your particular concourse. So you can do that. Great. Okay, good. So I think that the, the rule or the, the note for everyone is make sure to allow plenty of time if, if you're not going to take the train. Or oh, either. absolutely. And the walk from concourse to concourse is only five minutes. It's a great walk. I love what the airport's done. I love it too. And then you get an opportunity to see the great artwork um, mm -hmm. as you're walking through. I think it's really great. Um, and most people don't even realize we have an outstanding art program because, I mean, people are in a rush and they, you know, they got to jump on the train. They got to get to the next concourse and they got to get to their gate. Yeah. yeah if, if, if any of our members or anyone on the call, if you, once you get back out there at the airport, and I sure miss it um, myself, but if you have the opportunity to walk it, I think the the bird sanctuary I call it is great. Going yes. through the, the jungle or <laughs> <laughs> concourse B, yes, concourse B, exactly. <laughs> um, and and here's a note um, or another question. So um, uh, the first part's a comment. Delta is the only U.S. airline blocking the middle seat currently. Um, this person has been on several trips. TSA has much improved, but still people are bunched up at the belt waiting to get their carry-ons to come through. How does the airport work with TSA to, to ensure proper social distancing? Um, the same manner, um, and again, um, that is something that we will take uh, to our partners meeting, um, something that we will monitor, um, but they are of the same um, procedures that we are there sometimes where yeah, that can happen. And again, we always try to stress to the person, um, like the person that's walking, you know, the person that's in front of you, you know, to keep that distance. And then we try to have as many of our, um, uh, Delta has what they call the red coats. And then there's also the customer service representatives, the ambassadors at a green coats. And they are in those areas too, to try to help people keep the, that distance. So, um, if we need to do a better job with that, definitely I will bring that back to the next partners meeting that we will have 
um, that we just need to be mindful of that in having our ambassadors to um, be a little bit more laser focused in helping um, TSA with that. That would be great. I know I've, I've heard that comment. Um, and yeah. I think several people have in the past that it's one, one area of concern. Yep, I'm making a note of it now. Thank you. Um, now, are you able to share any statistics on passenger demand within the airport? Passenger demand, um, meaning some of their requests. Um, Cindy, if you want to come off mute, do you do you want to elaborate on your question? You may not be in a situation. Okay. Um, now, when we're talking about passengers and all the dynamics as it relates to passengers, um, it will be really good because that's not my wheelhouse per se, is, um, but we have a customer service, right? Um, the director is Steve Mayer, and he does amazing work in that space. He is the one that is the keeper of all of the numbers, all of the passengers, desires, needs, and wants. Um, that information that he collects and develops, it determines some of the projects that we do, some of the um, you know, the technology that we um, put in the airport in order to enhance that customer experience. So I can definitely see if he has something that maybe Kim, I can get to you um, and hey. provide you to share with your leadership. Fantastic, okay. thank you. Who knows, maybe we can have Steve come to a meet. Come yeah, to and I was gonna say, meet. Steve can give you some really, really, really great um, information, a lot of innovation. Um, that is the, that department, that is their major focus on that passenger enhanced experience. And of course, my wheelhouse is to make it difficult for everyone. No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> <Love it. laughs> I'm trying to keep you safe and secure while he's inventing all these great, wonderful technology, technology spaces and enhancements. Yes. I love that. I, I can I can uh, imagine the conversations that go on. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so another question. You know, we, we see the airlines banning travelers that won't wear masks um, or that want to abide by the mask mandate. How's the airport handling those type of instances that occur? So if you have someone coming on that just refuses a mask, what, what, what's your team doing? Um, what happens if someone comes to the airport? Because again, you have to, when you enter this building and even on curbside, you must wear a mask now. So therefore, if a person refuses to um, uh, put on their mask or even accept the mask, we do escort them. Um, from the facility, and it has happened so far that I'm aware of, we've had to do it twice. Oh, wow, that's yes. not bad. Yes, and someone, and of course, it's more of them than it is of us. So if it's reported to us, we do go to the location. If one of the ambassadors, one of the employees say, hey, we have someone here um, that's not wearing the mask, um, then of course we go to that location. I want to use security reps, operations, police, go to the particular area. Um, and if they don't wear them, then we do escort them from the airport. And you definitely know when someone goes to the checkpoint and it, you, you can't even get through the checkpoint if you don't have a mask on. And you definitely can't get on the plane without one on. So yes, in our public space, that's how we handle it. If we see it and people do not um, abide by the rules, we do escort them from the uh, um, airport, out of the airport. Good, good to know. So, so you talked about, um, you know, the vaccinations and the, the Delta Museum and, and Concourse C for airport passengers. Um, have, have there been any discussions regarding an on-site testing locate or testing for the, for the virus or for COVID on-site? Um, yes, um, our marketing department, um, and this is something maybe Anika may add to as well. Um, Jai Farrell is working with that because some um, you're talking about, it's, I know it's starting with our international flights where um, some are coming in um, and they want to do some, some testing before persons go. So you have a couple of international. It's also been discussion about doing it domestically. Um, right. That would be a whole lot if we tried that. But now with the vaccine out, 
hopefully, um, you know, we can get to a point where those things will balance out. But yes, definitely, um, and, and some airports had started just some months ago, actually vaccinating people, I mean, I'm sorry, doing a um, COVID test prior to persons even go on, doing it on the public side before they even went to the security checkpoint. And then of course, you would know what their status was before they got to um, a, a gate. Yes, so definitely there have been discussions about that. And that will be interesting if they do pass that with domestic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh um, it's a lot. It, it would just be a lot. But again, if it's something that happens and then, of course, we, you know, are here we follow the rules and we do what we need to do. But um, but they have done it with international, some international flights. But I think now, now that the vaccine, um, I think that's going to help uh, with the domestic travel because, as you well know, with the vaccine, you do receive a card, so therefore you can show proof um, that you were um, vaccinated. So I'm sure, with as the travel industry as they become um, in enhancing their policy and procedure, there may be something that they will be requiring of people now. Um, because the that vaccine passport or... yeah absolutely because again a test is only good as that minute as that second you know that's it um, at okay. that time um but we would like to get as many people as good if someone is um vaccinated as well yeah. great now um with 2020 numbers not confirmed is there any rough gauge on monthly passenger traffic growth since since the beginning of the year um, we are steadily increasing, of course, um, certain events like this weekend, <laughs> our numbers will go up some, this is the final four weekend, um, um, it will go up, but we, it was projection that, um, and, and Anika can correct me if I'm wrong, um, I think by the end, let's say by the end of this year, we, we you know, we should be up at least about a 60% at least. Um, but I'm not sure with that because I can definitely get you those numbers and get it back because again, that is in, um, in our um, um, other departments on wheelhouse. Um, those particular numbers and stats as our numbers continue to grow. I can tell you about the 10%, the 30%, 40% and where our mark is planning to be um, where we are. And again, they are just projections because you just don't know. Anything can change. Um, anything can modify that, any event. Um, if something happens um, with the vaccination process, I mean, anything can change those numbers. And then people's confidence level, that's what's critically important. Um, people feeling comfortable about flying again. Um, could change those numbers as well. That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. And um, one of our guests today observed and, and commented on the chat that um, TSA cleared 1 million travelers for multiple weekdays two weeks ago. So mm -hmm. positive trend, definitely from the past months. So. Absolutely. And that's, um, you know, through the um, this entire United States system. Yes. 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 So our numbers are not as steady yet, but they are climbing. We are definitely climbing in our numbers um, constantly. We are climbing a little bit, you know, each time. And we would like to stay there, you know, really. So it's just so important that everyone just do their part in trying to stay safe um, so that we do not um, digress. Well, and that's a good, um a good segue into the next question. Um, are you able to share what the new etiquette is at the airport? Um, how long are lines to board with social distancing? What if you want to grab a snack? Where do you go? Or you know, where, where to go to sneak a bite, et cetera? Mm -hmm. um, so again, um, we, we still encourage if people are traveling, you know, give yourself an hour and a half, um, be, um, hour and a half, um, uh, leeway time. Um, the lines, of course, the lines are um, could appear longer than what they really are, only because you're, you know, because of the distancing, right? Because of the spatial distancing that you may have. So from optics, you may not say, oh my goodness, this is too long. But in actuality, it really isn't. It's because of the spacing there. So I will always say at least give yourself an hour and a half, if not two, especially if you want to go get something to eat and be digital, um, the touchless digital um, directories there will let you know what stores are open or what concourse you plan to go to, or even a concourse that's in route. Um, um, so that's definitely, um, definitely a plus. That's good. That's good to know. Okay. Um, okay, here's a question that's near and dear to many, many, or all of our, um, 
our participants on today's call. Okay. Any status update or estimated completion date of the hotel that's being built on site? Oh my. <laughs> Sorry. Y'all did this to me, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, let me see. Let's how I can put this politically put this. Uh, the hotel <laughs> hasn't even started yet, okay? Right. Uh, uh, it was a start date uh, and uh, COVID hit. And um, so there has not been a new current start update for the hotel. Uh, so I cannot, and I, I'll, I'll tell you what, I can give you a, a, another update on that one, but at this point, um, there's nothing going on with the hotel. All right. Thank you. We're making you sit too long, Jan. I, think. I know. Wait a minute. One second. I know. <laughs> what this light, right? <laughs> I know. I did my fingers all the way over. I'm so we sorry. Do, I keep forgetting about we that. We do <laughs> love the um, the energy conservation, and and I'll I'll um, just add a plug to okay. what Melody was talking about earlier with membership. Um, what Jan has promised to share with us is valuable, fabulous information. And when I get that, we will be posting it on our um, website. So even more reason we want to you know, make sure, encourage everyone to join um, the, the GBTA Georgia chapter. So Absolutely. Um, and that completes the questions that were submitted. Now, I do have a burning question for you. I know we've talked about it a little bit. Could okay. you spend a little bit of, of time, just a couple of minutes, telling us what your involvement is, what the airport's involvement is with human trafficking? Absolutely. I thought you would never ask him. <laughs> <laughs> so the airport is still actively involved in um, our fight um, against and to stop and to erase human trafficking. Uh, we still have our big initiative and in informing the masses about this insidious crime. We still continue to work with anti-human trafficking organizations. We do, still do our youth, um, youth partnerships and summits for our, our, our children, um, as well as our adults. One big thing that's happening now that I am so excited about and the video that was shown previously about data um, and um, analytics. We will be judging, we're working with, um, it's called Erase Child Trafficking, Beverly Wright. Beverly Wright, um, she is a data analytics science uh, center at the University of South Carolina. And what they have done is um, they have this um, judging um, program, this, this judging modeling program. Um, each student has to present a 10 minute video talking about data analytics. What data, like social media, what would you do with Facebook, um, Twitter, all of all of these platforms in order to help and get messaging across as it relates to stopping human trafficking and also educating people about human trafficking. So I am so excited about that because this is really good because you're getting that um, those great ideas from the youth because it, it really affects them because they're the most vulnerable and that's who um, the perpetrators are coming for it. So we are a part of that. We are in the process of judging some of these videos now. There will be a winner um, at the end of the month that will be announced. And I can definitely give you an update on that and share that with you, Kim, who that school, we have schools like Emory, um, Clark Atlanta, University of South Carolina, that's a part of it. They are 10 minutes long. And then um, if they make it to the second phase, the information that they presented now, they actually have to put that um, that um, information they presented about human trafficking and stopping human traffic. They have to now write out the whole scope of the data, data analytics about it. So that's going to be really great. So I thought that the airport really jumped on that because that was such a great idea of um, getting our youth involved, our universities about stopping um, human trafficking. So again, we are continuing with all of our initiatives that we've done before, getting the message out. We have digital printout. We have now announcements. If you come in the airport, you'll hear announcements about um, human trafficking. And of course, we always are on alert and big events like Final Four, um, again, create that type of activity brings more of that type of activity to your um, city. But of course, our fearless uh, public safety professionals are ready and stand ready uh, to protect um, 
any um, victims that we have. So again, we are so excited about that and we will continue and more airports have human trafficking programs as well. That's fantastic. Yes. That's great. That is, that's, that's good news. And so glad that, that you're involved personally and professionally in the airports doing so much. And, and Thank all... you so much for that. Well, with that, um, any final words that you'd like to share? Okay, then Dwight, I'm going to turn it over to you. All righty. Thank you, Kim. Uh, let me get one second. There we go. Sorry about that. Technical difficulty seems to be a little of that today. Uh, Jan, thank you so much for, for joining us again today and, and for your presentation. Um, always, always happy to have you with us. Uh, and we look forward to uh, the follow-up. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I also want to thank um, our sponsor again, Grasp Technologies, for um, sponsoring today's uh, meeting. Uh, next month, we have uh, CTM as our sponsor, and um, our meeting speaker will be Shane Downey, who is VP of Government and Community Relations with GBTA. So we're real excited to have Shane with us next month. Um, as always, a reminder to fill out our surveys and to, to support our social uh, our, our uh, social media networks or social media applications. And um, just one last thing, you know, the, the, the last year has really been, it's been a challenging year for all of us. Um, and as Rick mentioned, it's been a year since we've, we've had the opportunity to meet face to face. And I don't know about you, but it's wearing on me. And I, I really want to be able to see all of you in person. And my, my, my hope is that we're still going to be able to meet in June. Um, that's looking better and better. Um, but what I wanted to do is just kind of thank you for hanging in there with us. I mean, you know, Zoom meetings are not the most, um, they're not the most fun things to do, especially when you have three, four, five, six of them a day. So the, the fact that you continue to support us and stick with us this past year, I just wanted to, to, to say on behalf of the board that we really do thank you and appreciate your continued support. And um, we look forward to the day when we're able to see you in person. And again, hopefully that'll be June. So with that, I will close uh, and adjourn the meeting for today. I'll give you back about 29 minutes to your day. And we look forward to seeing you next month for our meeting with Shane Downey. Again, thank you and take care. <laughs>